Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Guide and the Boeing 737 Tech Site. And this video is about the mid-cabin emergency exit doors. Contents of this, uh, a short introduction into the subject, uh, word about the operation, various options for these doors, door warnings and flight locks, the uh, supplementary PSEU, max PSEU differences, and then um, a few words about Flight Alaskan 1282, which is the reason for me producing this video. As always, treat your company training and manuals as the authoritative source of information. Okay, for, by way of introduction, um, the whole purpose of these doors um, was to accommodate the long body models of the 737, and by that I mean the 900 ER, the original 900 didn't have these, which limited its passenger capacity, uh, the Max 8200, Max 9 and Max 10. Uh, they can all have a passenger capacity that exceeds the maximum allowable uh, from a, of a 737 which has got the standard four doors and overwing exit uh, for evacua evacuation regulations, hence the need for the, the this extra pair of mid-cabin emergency exit doors. Operation. So, um, this photo shows the outside view of, uh, of a door partially open. Um, they open outwards, as you can see here, uh, and hinged downwards. So, unlike doors 1 and 2 left and right, they don't need gates to reduce their size. And for more information on the gates, see my, uh, my door video on, on that. Um, however, they are plug type and to open, they must first move upwards to clear the stop fittings before they can fold down. So that's, you know, the um, I guess the, the the plug and the safety feature there. From inside, um, you, you can we, there's a view there of uh, a mid exit door stripped down whilst in maintenance. Obviously, it doesn't look like that with the um, with the passengers on board, uh, but this gives you, you know, uh, a, v a behind the scenes view of the um, of, of the components of the door. Um, this version is what's known as a door plug, so it's not a true um, <laughs> opening door, even though you can see it in the open position, as in it's not to be used as an emergency exit. Um, and I will come on to explain the differences between the door plug version and the other various versions in the options section. So this one, um, noticeable difference, it's got a full size window uh, most of them have actually just got a little porthole window. There's also no vent door. You can see at the top above the window where it would be on, on an aircraft with a vent door. There's no slide there um, or opening mechanism. There are lift assist springs in the hinges, which are down at the bottom there, um, that lift the door plug about an inch and a half, just under four centimeters, and that lift assist spring makes sure the door will not fall back into the closed position. The um, the door or plug in this case is attached in the in the closed position by two bolts that go through the the upper guide fittings and two lower hinge bolts that that, that go through lower hinges, bracket assemblies. The Opening versions of the doors um, have a, a little vent door that you can see there at the top. Residual air pressure is released through this um, vent door, or pressure relief door, whatever you want to call it, um, above the portal when the inside or outside handle is pulled. So when either handle is pulled, the pressure released is, is, is released through that uh, vent door there. When the handles move to the open position, uh, first thing that happens is the vent door opens to release any residual air pressure, otherwise you wouldn't physically be able to open the door. Um, and the door lifts, I say, just under four centimeters to, to clear the stop fittings. When the handle moves to the fully open position, the door stays in a sort of cocked open position and it won't move down until you give it a push. So you, you, it's it's not like the overwing exits, which kind of spring open when when you when you pull the handle to to open them down. These you actually have to give them a little push. And uh, in the pictures, that padding on the fuselage is just there to prevent damage uh, for for the test. So that's obviously not usually there. Options. 
okay there's there's quite a lot of these um and the 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 reason is really uh due to um seating capacity so although the maximum number of seats that can be installed in the in the different models of the 737 is fixed many operators choose to install less seats for for passenger comfort and you know you can see some examples i've just picked off the net here um line air up at the top there with and now these, these are all 737 max 9s because i wanted to show you you know co comparing like with like so so line air um operate their max 9s with with a 221 you know high density passenger configuration and you can see on their seat map that they have mid exit doors um uh, available the bottom two images are united and alaskan uh, which operate in a 179 and 178 PAX config respectively and that's you know because they have different classes of seating you know sort of well I don't know what they call it but equivalent to kind of a first class and a business class and then a um, economy class so that means that well once you give him more legroom and space to those classes you, you've got less seats on the aircraft uh, they still presumably wanted the the longer fuselage version be, be, to give everybody that that amount of uh, passenger comfort but this means to say that the the, the mid exit doors do not always have to be active and, and there are many options for these doors uh, depending upon the operator's requirements there, there are actually eight options and uh, I'll take you through these now. Um, note that not all options, not all of these eight options are available for each variant. So the options are door plug deactivated, type three with no attendant seat, and then two more type threes with an attendant seat, what one for high density and one for regular density. Type two, type one, and type C. And the table I've um, put there on the right hand side shows you the the availability of those options for the uh, the different aircraft variants so let's go through them one by one door plug um, this was the one I showed you on the the maintenance photo um, and it's most easily identifiable because it's the only one of all of those eight options which has got the full-size passenger window this is only available on the max 9 so not available on the the 8200 or the 10 or the the 900 ER. Only available on the nine, and it limits the maximum passenger capacity to 189. The door structure is modified so the side wall doesn't infringe into the interior, and the row of standard seats can be installed. Um, that's you know re really one of the big differences between those that can be opened and those that can't be opened, is that you you can put you know. A row of standard seats wh wh wherever you wish. A full-size window is also installed, as you, as you can see. Now, Boeing warned that future activation of um, the mid-cabin emergency exit doors will involve a significant cost, and therefore, to consider retaining the baseline configuration with deactivated mid-cabin exit doors, if future activation of those those doors is required. Um, as I say, th this is not; these doors are not deactivated in in the the sort of common sense of the word i mean that they're, they're just kind of not there at all as you can see from the inside uh we'll come on to deactivate in a second but nevertheless this remains a common option um as you can see from the external view comparing uh, a door plug with a regular mid exit window um it's got the got this full-size passenger window and all of the other options have got a um, a porthole window or no window at all if deactivated um, you can see that the door when when plugged it doesn't have the external handle or pressure relief door again because it doesn't open right deactivated um, this is baseline on the 9 and optional on the 10 and it limits the passenger the maximum passenger capacity to 175 both doors are installed but deactivated and covered by as you can see sidewall lining panels the 
assist handle support structure a, a, a adjacent to the doors is not installed because again they, the, the, these are these are not to be opened and it's the only configuration which has got no windows either full size or porthole all the door provisions are actually kept in case the operator chooses to activate the doors after delivery as I say, this, although it doesn't look it because it's, it's got no window, this is actually an easier change for an operator to make the door active than the, the door plug option. Next on the list is Type 3, and this is the version with no attendance seat. So the only you know difference there is, is that one seat, the seat right next to the door, is missing or well not missing it's removed um, and this is baseline config for the uh, the 8200 um, and the 10 it's not an option for the 9 and the maximum passenger capacity is 200 which is where the 8200 gets its name from the uh, the mid cabin exit doors are, are activated with a, a type 3 exit door rating no attendance seat is provided and uh, EASA and possibly some other authorities I'm not quite sure who it might be um, don't allow this configuration so you um, you you won't see this in uh, EASA land anywhere in Europe um, note that a direct view system is required for certification of the aircraft with unattended type 3 mid cabin exit doors and by a direct view system we mean the porthole so that's why it's got one of those Type three with an attendancy, as you can see on the um, on on the, the the photo there, you see the seats actually forward of the door, uh, and that means that those two rows lose a passenger seat, both the one adjacent to the door and the one forward of it, because you've got to have the attendant door, the attendant seat there as well. This is only an option for the A200 and the 10, um, and it's for operators whose uh, who's, who's local CA, require, such as the ARSA, requires an attendant seat at the, the mid cabin exit. It's not an option for the 9, and the maximum passenger capacity remains at 200. Um, I say this option modifies the, uh, the exit door with a Type 3 door rating to add a, a handset, uh, an attendant seat, and an attendant partition on the right hand side only not the left hand side. There is also a high density ver version of this um, and it's an option for the A200 and the 10 and increases the maximum passenger capacity to 210. Type 2 is the next option and this is available on the uh, the MAX 9 and 10 and it's required for a maximum passenger capacity of up to 215. I say this is typically pitched towards operators who will operate in that 190 to 215 slot. Any less than 190 and you probably go for one of the earlier options we've already covered. So this option activates the, uh, the mid cabin exit doors with a Type 2 emergency door rating and adds an escape slide at the doors. It installs a handset, an attendant seat, and a tenant partition on the right-hand side. So all of the, the other things we've seen, albeit with a Type 2 door. Um, but the big visual difference is that the storage bins above the, um, the exit are removed. So there's more headroom, makes for a faster um, ev evacuation of the, of the passengers. Type 1. Um, this is available on the, the 9 the 10. Uh, it's, it gives a maximum passenger capacity of up to 220. Um, and, and again, it's, it's got all the same things as the, as, as the previous slide, the Type 2, uh, except it is a Type 1 rated door. So you can see that the, you know, the attendant seats there and the, the storage bins above the exit are removed. And the final option is a Type C. This is only available on the on the Max 10 because it ups the maximum passenger capacity to 230. So there's only the Max 10, which is, is physically capable of taking that number of, of passengers. Um, and again, it's got all of the previous things uh, on the on the previous two slides, except that this is rated as a Type C emergency exit door. All right, on to door warnings and flight locks. Um, the uh, in the flight deck what we will notice is that we have now got mid exit enunciators left and uh, and right on the on the doors panel 
and these are triggered by the uh, well the the SPSEU on the on the NGs. What I'll do is I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk first and foremost about the um, about the NG here. So I'll be referring to the the the, the PSEU and the SPSEU, um, and. In a few slides' time, I'll I'll go on to to highlight the max differences because because there are some in in this respect. So all of the door warning lights um, are triggered by sensors in the door locks. That that's for you know every door on 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 you know every external door on the aircraft. Um, the circuits for these door warning lights are in the PSU or the SPSU specifically for the mid exit doors. If a door is unlatched, the sensor will detect it and will send a signal to the PSU. The, the PSEU will then illuminate the corresponding door warning light. So that's a kind of overview of how it works. Uh, as I say, with, specifically for the mid-exit doors, it's done by the SPSU, the supplementary PSEU. The overwing exits and the mid-exit doors have got flight locks. These activate on the takeoff roll when the uh, the thrust levers uh, exceed 53 degrees to prevent them from, from being opened in flight. And they deactivate on landing when the thrust levers are retarded below 53 degrees. That's thrust lever angle. The flight locks, they're solenoid held plungers which hold the door lock shaft into the lock position. They're controlled by the PSU for the overwing exits and the SPSU for the mid-exit doors. If the, the, the flight lock solenoids are DC powered to the lock position, so if DC power is lost, the locks will release and a tension spring also pulls the, the, the flight lock pull to the unlock position. Um, a word about faults because they can happen, um, as we know, flying um, flying these aircraft. Um, if a flight lock fails to engage when the thrust levers are advanced for takeoff, the associated door light will illuminate. And again, I'm sure we've all seen this with any of us with any time on the aircraft. Um, if a flight lock has failed locked or a fault is detected, the PSU stroke SPSU light will illuminate but will be inhibited inhibited in flight. So again this is to, just to you know remove the distraction for us. And um, there's the, the, the logic table for, for which brings up which condition brings on brings up which light. Right, the SPSEU. Um, it's simply an electronic card. Well, it can be two electronic cards um, used on some NGs. Um, it's in the, the J23 junction box uh, in the in eBay and it controls, well, either of the two position tail skid, uh, if you've got that installed, and the, the mid exit door flight locks, um, if you've got mid exit doors. The MAX doesn't have an SPSEU, and again, I'll come on to what the MAX has in a second. So, the SPSEU has got a separate card for each of those two functions. Um, if, you know, you get the opportunity to go into the in eBay, get an engineer to take you in, uh, ask him to open up the J23, and you can look in and see it will have either one or two cards. Um, slot A, which is the right-hand one as we, we look at it, that's for the tail skid. Slot C is for the, the mid-exit door locks. Um, B and D are not used. So, the the 737-900ER has got an SPSEU light um, as well as a PSEU light. Um, all NGs with a two-position tail skid have got an SPSEU car, but not necessarily the light. <laughs> this this is where it gets confusing. So that that's why I've done this, this this sort of graphic here, just to show you the the various options and combinations. The two-position tail skid has got no output to the SPSEU light. So the light isn't fitted unless the aircraft has also got mid-exit doors. That's the reason why. Um, all 900 ERs have got the SPSU light fitted. However, if the mid-exit doors are deactivated, the SPSU light will be placarded up by maintenance, as per the center photo there. So there are your three combinations. Um, if you've got active mid-exit doors, you'll have an active SPSU light. If they're deactivated, it'll be in opt. And any other NG um, will just have the PSEU light. Right, on to the max differences. 
So on the Macs, the the PSEU and SPSEU have been combined into a into one new PSEU, um, and it and it looks quite different. Um, and it it's it's in the the, the still in the forward equipment bay um, but includes all of the functions of the of the PSU and the SPSU so that so the two position tail skid and the mid exit doors um, it doesn't have a bite panel anymore um, and this is something that the the 73 is, is, is going towards with, with, with the max to, to you know remove LRUs with, with, with a bite function and instead have the the bite facility in current fault and fault history all available from the flight deck on the OMS pages. So, uh, so the, 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 you know, you can see at the bottom of that uh, right, uh, sorry, left-hand graphic there, the, the doors, um, and it, it actually shows the, um, the 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 gap and whether it's you know near or far. I'll say, see my PSU video for for more in, information about this. We're going to it in, in a little more depth. Now the Max hasn't got a, a PSU or SPSU like it's it it's they've been replaced by a, a single main for maintenance light, um, and that's even those models with mid exit doors. It's all rolled into one now. It also indicates other non PSEU status level faults, uh, which must be ch checked by engineers before dispatch using the the maintenance control pages of of the OMS. Any hard faults will usually bring along bring on a, a system caption, for instance, spoilers. Um, status level faults will generally only bring on the maintenance light, and this maintenance light is inhibited in flight and during engine start. And again, in flight, it's 53 degrees thrust lever angle. Okay, um, quick word about Alaskan Flight 1282. Um, so I'm recording this um, less than 24 hours after the, the this event um, but for those of you watching it later on when it's um, perhaps not such new news on the 5th of January 2024 um, an Alaskan Airlines 737 MAX 9 was climbing through approximately 16,000 feet when the, mid -eg with the left mid-exit door detached in flight. The aircraft obviously depressurized uh, the crew stopped the, cl the climb and returned back to Portland where it departed from. I haven't included it here um, but Google it or, or what have you and you will find video footage of this event um, on, on various social media platforms uh, and news outlets as well and it it actually from what I can see shows the cabin remarkably calm um, Considering you know there's a there's a big chunk of the um, of the fuselage missing. Uh, thankfully, none of the 171 passengers or six crew were injured. I think the closest was um, a little boy that was sat near this exit. Um, the, the 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 media reports I've seen said that the shirt was taken you know off his back and you know disappeared out this door. Whether it did or not, I don't know, but. Um, Fortunately, it, 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 it was no worse than that. Now, photos of the of the aircraft after the incident show that th this mid-exit door completely detached. Uh, this is a photo of that that aircraft, and that 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 shows its condition after um, after landing. Now, photos of the aircraft before the incident, <coughs> and by this I mean, <coughs> excuse me days and weeks before the incident show that it had a normal sized passenger window in the the mid exit doors that means that it had the plug option so we, we we know that for sure because it's the only option which has the normal sized passenger windows so this is a photo of the type of door that that aircraft will have had with the, with the plug option now, according to the maintenance manual, the the door stroke plug, whatever you want to call it. I mean, strictly speaking, it isn't a door; it's a plug. But you know, we're, that's semantics. It's attached in the in the closed position by four bolts, two bolts that go through the upper guide fittings, you know, one on each side, and two bolts that go through the lower hinges again, one on each side. So there's basically a bolt in each corner. Now, for this incident to have occurred. 
something must have been amiss with at least one of those bolts um, probably more um, and it's perhaps worth mentioning that the aircraft was only two months old it got its its flight certification in um, mid-october or um, 2023 and came online with with alaska and i think on the 31st of october so it was it was just two months old so um a lot of questions to be answered there by um <coughs> possibly alaskan possibly boeing uh we 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 don't know yet it's 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 early days it's less than 24 hours since the event but the ngsb and uh and boeing are in investigating the incident um and i'm sure more news will follow as always, if you've uh, enjoyed this video and found it useful, please like and uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. Thank you very much.